Hello and welcome to the CX Summit 2022. My name is Sandra and today I'm joined by Tim Pickard, Chief Marketing Officer at Sabio. Hello Tim, how are you doing today? Hi Sandra, yeah I'm great, thank you. Good, good. Now in today's session we're going to learn more about Sabio and your outlook on the future of CX. So before we kick things off, Tim, could you please give us a brief introduction of yourself and the company? Sure, yeah. Um, uh, thank you, Sandra. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Tim Picard. I'm Chief Marketing Officer at Sabio. Um, I've been in tech marketing for um, about three decades now, so uh, have um, some experience around, uh, around the topic and um, have been with uh, CX in the CX space for probably 15 years now as well. So you know, this is an area that um, that I have uh, some some experience in. Sabio, as an organisation, is a digital CX transformation specialist. Um, so really, that means that we work with traditional contact centre environments, but also we're looking much broader than that at things <clears throat> like um, AI, like uh, CRM. So bringing those technologies together to provide very comprehensive solutions for our customers from the beginning of their relationship with with their customers uh, right through to um, the a successful uh, kind of long term relationship with their customers. So includes a lot of a lot of um, digital uh, includes a lot of analytics includes a lot of AI it includes uh, their employee relationships as well, and their advisor relationships, and how and and the the well being of of their advisors. So it's really quite broad in terms of the, uh, the the scope of the area that we work with. But broadly, digital CX covers it. Yeah, thank you. Now, when we are speaking about trends, obviously a lot has been going on over the last two years, and particularly over the last twelve months. So yeah. could you tell us what your customer found the most value in CX over the past year? Yes, yes. Uh, obviously, things have changed dramatically over the last couple of years. But uh, I think there are three real big trends that we've seen in the marketplace uh, and that are playing out now um, and will play out over the next two, three years. Uh, but these are things that we can quite clearly see are happening. So the first one is that customer behavior has changed pretty dramatically over the last couple of years. COVID has accelerated that for sure, but it was gonna happen anyway. So COVID has really acted as a catalyst to, to make that happen. And the, the, behavior, the change in behavior is really, is really that customers have gone more to digital channels. So a piece of research that uh, I was looking at from Twilio said that 61% increase in digital channels over the pandemic. Now that's, you know, I think we can all understand that um, the opportunity to, to go to stores, to go to the high street, uh, to, um, to meet in physical locations has been, has not been there. Uh, but it's very clear that most retailers um, and most organizations think that that's probably not going to go back to where it was. So I was listening to the retail consortium in the UK last week and, and they said very clearly that they thought that uh, the majority of purchases would be through online. Um, and we can see that in our own workspaces. We've, we've all gone to work from, from home and now we're working in a hybrid environment. And most people are in that situation where they're, they're working more from a from a home office than they than they were before the pandemic. So we've we've definitely shifted in terms of our our customer behavior, um, and businesses' behavior has changed as well. They they have to meet their customers where they where they want to meet. Um, that's been digital. So there's been a big shift to digital channels. That could be <clears throat> the web. It could be apps. Uh, you know, it could be chat. There's lots of different ways that um, that those digital channels can 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 be accessed um, but it's very clear from a business point of view that they have less opportunity to meet physically or actually have a discussion with their customer because voice channel is being used less um, and digital channels are being used more 
So the attitude towards contact center has changed. And this is now regarded as an opportunity to meet with customers and to learn more about customers in a in a one to one environment. So um, that's one big trend that we have seen. The other element of that is that there's now a very strong link between uh, good customer experience and profitability. And we've seen that through a number of different surveys. The Watermark survey is probably the, the, um, the most widely quoted, um, but there are a number of others uh, about that look at the link between profitability and good customer experience. And so there is that, there is that causal link there now. And what that means is that this is now uh, an, an area where organizations are starting to have that debate at a very senior level, if not board level, around the investment that they need to make in customer experience. So that's another big trend. And the third one is around technology and the investment in technology um, and new entrants into the market. So we've worked for a long time with vendors like Avaya and Genesis and Verint, um, but now we work uh, with Google, we work with Twilio, we work with Amazon, um, and Salesforce are, are a strong player in this marketplace with Service Cloud, but they're also investing in their own technologies for workforce management, for example, uh, and they led a round of investment in Genesis of, of, of around $500 million. So there's an enormous amount of technology change going on in this marketplace as well. So those are the, the three key trends that we see. You've mentioned a couple of integrations and technological trends. So could you tell me uh, what were the most popular products in your portfolio recently and why? Yeah, sure. So I think we've seen the most growth in AI and automation. And um, and we will continue to see that. This, this really is in its infancy right now. Um, but... When I talk about AI, what I'm talking about is um, is bots, is uh, conversational AI, so being able to talk to a computer much like you would talk to, you know, Amazon Alexa or something like that. Um, it's the ability for computers to essentially interface with us us through speech, uh, and <clears throat> that um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's been a, a quite a big change and one that we've seen adopted by. Um, a number of large organizations, really to help them to manage those high volume transactions that, that they get asked for. So I'll give you an example. HomeServe is a customer that's adopted this technology. They have around two, two and a half million calls a year. And their plan was to be able to, to um, manage about 50% of their call volume through conversational AI. Um, <clears throat> And that's things like booking engineers, home visits, those types of things to um, to fix leaks in plumbing and, and kind of home appliances, those types of things. Uh, and actually what they managed to do was to, uh, to, to manage about 70% of their call volume through their conversational AI. So that's people being able to um, describe a problem and book an, an appropriate engineer for that problem. Um, so we've got to be able to recognize through AI the customer, the account, and what that problem is, and then be able to offer a suitable time for that engineer to call. And all of that can be handled through through um, through AI, uh, and customer satisfaction went up as a result of that. Um, so we see that as a very big um, technology trend that customers are very interested in, um, and um, not just because there's a cost implication, because actually what happens is that the uh, advisors now become high level advisors. So they, we take away some of that low level traffic and we replace it with more sensitive or difficult, more urgent um, customers that need to be managed. And those conversations take longer. But that is where the opportunity is to have that one to one physical conversation with your customers that you don't get very often. So that's increased in importance as well. Yeah, now looking to the future, obviously a lot of interesting things um, are in the plans. 
but can yeah. you uh, maybe tell us what can your customers expect from Sabio over the coming 12 months? Yeah. Well, uh, that's a good that's a good question. I think that there are there's a lot of coming together of um, technologies, uh, and I think that that's what we're going to see. We're going to see the move to the cloud as being um, a very significant change. So, a lot of organisations have um, moved some of their infrastructure to the cloud. Probably not all. Uh, so they're running in a hybrid environment, which is perfectly fine. But we see that trend continuing. The importance of data, um, that's something that we see as being a very big uh, trend over time as well. So we mentioned that customers are moving more to digital environments. Digital environments mean that we can, we can understand a lot more about that conversation than about that customer. Um, and therefore, data becomes really, really important to be able to do things like um, predict um, when customers may have may have a challenge or a problem, what that might be, being able to preempt that for our customers. So, um, so data is a very important part of of, of uh, kind of the next phase. Uh, we've talked about AI and and automation. That's a very important part of this as well. I think understanding the customer, so bringing in customer relationship management (CRM) into the contact center and being the heart of that. And we talked a little bit about Salesforce's investment in this space. Um, and they clearly see this as an opportunity and an area where <coughs> CRM becomes very, very important um, to be able to tie together all of that customer information. So that's really critical. And then the last, um, the last piece is around analytics, understanding what's going on. There's a lot of things happening, a lot of, uh, a lot of data, um, that's accessible now, so being able to raise that um, and being able to make decisions, better decisions, both for our customers but also for our employees around and uh, using that uh, data through analytics. Excellent, excellent. Now, uh, obviously, visitors of the summit will be able to find uh, Sabio's content, content hub, but uh, where mm -hmm. can people find more about um, your services and products? Yeah, absolutely. So the best place is um, our website. So www.sabiogroup.com uh, is definitely the best place to go. And it's, you know, navigation is uh, is very clear around that. But I would say, you know, about us section is, is going to provide a lot of information, but also resources. So lots of customer case studies, lots of videos, a um, lot of lot of technology, you know, content on there as well. So I would uh, I would direct people to uh, to SavioGroup.com. Thank you, Tim. It was lovely speaking to you. Thank you. Nice to talk to you as well. And thanks everyone for watching. See you in the next video.